We shall be reading from the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58. Chapter 58. The book of Isaiah, 58. Chapter 58, the book of Isaiah. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God, they ask of me the ordinances of justice that take delight in approaching God. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers. Indeed you fast for strife and debate and to strike with the feast of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to flick his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? Is this not the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover him, and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your regard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and He will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him not doing your own ways, nor find your own pleasure, nor speak in your own words, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. The day of fasting of the people of Israel, God sends a prophetical message to His people, acknowledging, yes, what He has in His heart, but at the same time, and afterward, revealing what are not pleasing before God, firstly, and secondly, what if the people of Israel walk into, then the glory of God will be revealed in their lives. I see you, Israel, he says, my people, that you seek me every day. Every day you pray. You want to know my ways. You want to know my will, my way, and how you should walk. And you are like, but you're not, as a nation that did righteousness and do not forsake the ordinance of their God. You ask of me the ordinances of justice and you take delight in approaching God. These are all good, but you have not succeeded in any of these things. And you haven't succeeded because, because maybe you don't know and you should learn what are the things that I don't want, but especially what are the things I do want? Not only the day of fasting, but every day in your personal life. That's why you fast and you have no answer. That's why 
you afflict your soul, and you don't know my will. My brethren, it's something which God usually does to teach His people for the way in which He must walk on. Since they firstly abandon the way that, he fo that they follow now, and this, my beloved brethren, is the most important thing in which we can seek for and obtain from God. Why? Firstly, because our mistakes are corrected and ugly situations which have been created because of our mistakes. And secondly, because a new way is revealed to us now, a way revealed by God Himself to us, in which if we walk on it, with the grace of Christ, of course, now in the New Testament, and the power of the Holy Spirit, then God will be with us. And three things is a message today for us, that He will save you. And when I say He will save you, His salvation is in full. He will bless you. And when I say He will bless you, I mean that God's blessings will be in full. And thirdly, He will be glorified in your life. He will glorify you and He will be glorified because then you will be precious before His eyes. But let's take things from the beginning. Firstly, I don't like the way you fast. It's not for you not to drink and not to eat. Only. It's not only to afflict your body. But, for the spiritual man to continue his own way, it's not only to, to make our natural body suffer. I could say that this is very easy. Other religions do this also. And true sufferings at that. And other religions do this also. They go and close themselves up in a monastery. They sit on a pole. They don't move. It's not only for us to make our body suffer, my brethren. It's not to put laws on natural man. Yes, we will do this also. Of course we'll fast. Because what is fasting? The man of flesh humbles himself, not drinking and eating. And then, spiritual man is revealed. Spiritual man is exalted. But what even if I do all this and carnal man is humbled and the spiritual man who comes out is not according with the will of God. Now this is deceit and this is the problem. For me to humble my carnal ways, my natural man, so a spiritual man can be revealed in deceit. What I will gain will be zero. And the damage will be great. And now God comes. We won't get into details as it says, but it's good for us to read it with all cautiousness. But firstly, we, we must examine. Spiritual man must examine our relationship with the people around us. And the Bible says, to loose the bonds of wickedness. You have done wrong. They have done wrong. And they are in bonds of wickedness. You, don't be indifferent to this. But I pray, leave praying aside for now. Leave praying aside first and you must take care of things. What do you mean you pray? You have someone else who's suffering. You say, Christ, please bless me. What is God? Your servant. What is God? He doesn't understand. Take care of things firstly around you. What you have done wrong, the bonds of wickedness, the heavy burdens, those who you oppress, those who are under yoke, those who are hungry, those who are homeless and poor, he who is naked, do not be indifferent to them. And it says something, do not hide yourself from your own flesh. Don't hide yourself and say, I don't care about anybody else. What do you mean you don't care? What do you mean you don't care? You know, there was one rich man who was praying and he was clothed in purple and fine linen. And there was a poor man right next to him, Lazarus, and he was hungry and the dogs licked his sores. And he said, I don't care about him. He deserves what he gets and you deserve what you get. The worst words in which a Christian can express is that he deserves what he gets. My beloved brethren, if God said this for us, we'll be all in hell right now. But God doesn't say we deserve what we get. God says, go my son, and free, save, bless. 
Give food, give water. Give freedom, give comfort. If you want for the Lord to save you always, firstly, you save. Because, my beloved brethren, we cannot stand before God because you can't play with God if we ask one thing and do something else. And we want God to offer us one thing and we offer other things to other people. This is being unjust. This is wickedness. It's hypocrisy. You cannot demand love and you to give hate. For you to demand salvation from God and for you to abuse the people around you. For you ask for words of comfort from God and for you to make other people bitter with your words. This is not fasting. It's not what God wants. It's not for me in other words to humble my flesh so a spiritual man can be revealed who abuses, who causes affliction, who does unjustly, who binds, who puts in captivity, who burdens, who oppresses. What can God do with such a man? To this man, will God ever answer? To this man, will God act? Or will he come with strictness so he can repent and return? So, my beloved brethren, when we pray to God, first we must have loosed the bonds of wickedness and undo the heavy burdens around us. We must have restored things all around us to everyone, whether it is our responsibility, even more so, and even when it's not our responsibility, the same. It's the same important. Because remember, the Levites and the priests who saw that man who was ready to die, who the thieves had beaten, and God brought them from that way so they can help him, and they were indifferent. Not caring isn't a characteristic of Christ or a Christian. A characteristic of Christ and a Christian is love and the labor of love. So the first characteristic, so God will continue saving you is for you to save according to your ability but with the love which Christ puts in your heart the people who are all around you to save them from their sorrows with your comfort to comfort them in their tears with your tears to bring them close to Christ with your hug and Whatever you do, do it in the name of Jesus. The second characteristic is, how will God bless you? God has intentions to bless you, yes. You have taken care because this is in order of things. You have taken care of your loose ends with your surroundings. Or you ask help from God since firstly you have repented to take care of all the loose ends with your surroundings. The second characteristic, my brethren, is to take out of your heart the yoke which oppresses people. Pride, secondly, and hypocrisy, third. In other words, to take care of things with your own heart, with yourself. Because you might help but inside your heart, you might have arrogance and boasting for these actions, these trials of yours. And truly, the salvation in which you offer to all people in the name of Jesus, your heart therefore must be taken care of, must be clean, pure, must be freed from everything. You will not have threat inside of it, violence, anger, wrath, Secondly, you will not have pride, arrogance. See what I did. You must be grateful to me. We owe nothing to no one, my brethren. We only owe our gratitude to God. We don't demand gratitude from anyone. Glory, glory to God that Christ gave us His grace and we are here today. And we hope that God helps us serve firstly His church and then, in that way, Christ Himself. And the least one in the church, who is Christ, according to His own confession. And thirdly, my brethren, vain words, hypocritical words, words of lies, words full of pride, are the three things that when you fast, and carnal man is humbled, natural man is humbled, then, 
Your pride is revealed. When you are humbled, your pride is revealed. What pride? Spiritual pride of the spiritual man. When you fast, violence is revealed. Anger is revealed when you have it in your heart. Wrath, revenge is revealed. What can God do with you then? Can He bless you like that? But if you go to God and say, Lord, I see inside of me, in my inner self, things are not that well. My brother stepped on me and I got angry. A brother spoke to me rudely and I wanted to hit him over the head. I was angry. I was full of wrath. I am not as a sheep before its shearers. I have not given up myself to he who judges rightly. I'm not a man who you, Lord God, wants to be. Who you want to bless. Let me say it, even though it's not right. I'm not worthy of your blessings, Lord. The truth is that no one is worthy of God's blessings. But I'm not even worthy to find grace before you. I'm not even worthy for you to show me mercy, Lord. I hide hypocrisy. I pretend I'm kind. I pretend I'm good. I smile. And inside of me I've got other things. I pretend I'm humble. And I'm full of pride. And I see this. Maybe someone else doesn't. But I see it inside of me, Lord. And even though I say and try to show that I am meek and lonely in the heart, I am full of pride and I get angry. Lord, you cannot bless me. I repent. Forgive me. This is fasting, my brethren. Fasting is repentance. I repent. Forgive me because I haven't taken care of things with my surroundings, with my brethren, with my relatives, with my wife, with my husband, with my children, with my parents. How can you save me, Lord? I repent. Forgive me, Lord, because I haven't humbled myself truly with meekness and humility in the heart. It's not by chance, my brother, what Christ says, learn from me that I am lowly in the heart. Humble and lowly in the heart. And when I open my mouth, I never stop talking. I just say, 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 say. And words that are rotten, words that are evil, and words that are bad. And for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And then I realize that I'm not worthy for your grace or your mercy. How much more your blessing. Lord, forgive me. And when man, my brethren, passes this way, then Christ says, come, come now, and you see how I will bless you. Come, and you will see how I will act in your life. I will make your light dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. But it's not only that, the most important thing is that I will guide you continually, always. See, my brethren, while we care for God to be with us, I will guide you always. I will satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. I will use you and I will call you a repairer of the breach and the restorer of streets to dwell in. So my brethren, here it is. The way we behave to our surroundings brings the answer of God. We pray and God says, here I am. Humility and us taking care of our inner self brings us blessings and gives ability to God to use us. So He can correct all those mistakes in which they did or we did or I did or you did. Repairer of the breach. Do you want to be this? I do. What can I say? I want this. Not to correct your ruins, but to correct my mistakes, my ruins, my families. And to you something, my brethren, God has made us like that. But we want always for Him to guide us and always to use us as repairers of the breach. This is a great miracle. Let's not oversee it. Let's not pass it by. Don't be indifferent to it. 
You know what it means for you to have the complete guidance of the Holy Spirit for Christ to guide you always so you can correct everything that's bad. May God give us His grace. May God give us His grace to make you, to make me, to make us all as a church like that. But it's not only blessings, my brethren. The final goal of Christ is one, the glory of God in our lives. The final goal of God, our Father, is one, the glory of Jesus in our lives. The final goal of God in our lives is for Him to glorify us. From the moment you have stood precious before me, I have glorified you. And our things here, my beloved brethren, are different. Let me remind you the beginning. That first we must take care of our relationship with the people around us. Secondly, to take care of our own hearts. To correct things, in other words, around us and to correct things inside our hearts. But now there is something which is much more important and more difficult to do. And we really need the grace of Christ to do it. To correct our relationship with God. When I say this, I mean to perfect our relationship with God. When I say to correct our hearts, I mean to perfect our hearts. When I say to correct our relationship with other people, our brethren, is to perfect our relationship with them through Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying that we'll become perfect people, but I say that we shall walk towards perfection. We will have a goal. And today, my brethren, leaving here, I want all of us to have goals in our lives. To restore everything as far as people are concerned. To restore and to clean our hearts with the blood of Jesus Christ. And to restore our relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, the Father can work in our lives, and Christ to work in our lives, and the help of the Spirit of Truth to work in our lives. What will you do? You will not follow your own way anymore. You will not try to find your will so you can fulfill it and you will not speak your own words. Who is He? Christ. I do not come to do my own will but my Father's. I do not come to speak my own words. I say what my Father said to me. I do not come to do my own work but I came to do the work of my Father. I do not come to glorify myself but to glorify my Father. Hallelujah. Goals. Dear Lord, bring us into holiness and pureness. Dear Lord, always teach us, reveal to us, and to give us power so we can do your will. Dear Lord, always teach us and reveal to us and to give us strength so we can walk on the way your way in which you have created for us. Dear Lord, always help us to speak words of God. Not our own words, Lord, but the words of Christ. Our words, my brethren, through experience I say this, do not do good. I won't say they destroy, because that can happen. I won't say they pull down, because that does happen. I won't say our words bitter people, because this does happen sometimes. They even afflict people. Only the words of Christ edify, comfort, strengthen, give solutions, give guidance. Dear Lord, fill us with your word. In other words, make your word abide in us richly. Amen, brethren. Richly for the word of God to live inside of us. So when we open our mouths for words of God to come out. And God wants this and we want this. But as I said in the beginning, today we will leave this church and we will have goals. We will not remain as forgetful listeners today, but we shall become doers of work. We will go and take care of our relationship with all people, all people, with the grace of Christ. With the power of the Holy Spirit, we shall go to Christ and open our hearts and say, Here are our mistakes, Lord, and I get angry, and I'm not meek, and I'm not humble, and I say vain words, Here I am, correct me, Christ, because I want to enjoy your blessings. 
I want you to save me and bless me with perfect blessings which are yours. And now, dear Lord, I want my relationship with you to be perfect, which your word gives and your Holy Spirit gives. I want to be united with you, Lord, always with your word and your spirit. Lord, I want to abide in you, Christ, and you to abide in me. I want your love to be in me and my love to be only towards you. Dear Lord, I want the voice of the Holy Spirit to thunder in my stomach and in my heart for the voice of the turtle dove to be heard, the voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of heaven. Amen.